Today there was another terrible shooting at, uh, in the Wilkinsburg community in Allegheny County. On March 1st, 2000, the midday bustle of Wilkinsburg was shattered when a gunman shot his way through two fast food restaurants, deliberately targeting his victims by their race. The rampage started in an apartment building when a mentally ill man named Ronald Taylor argued with two maintenance men over a repair to his door, hurling racist comments at them. We just finished the door and I come out of the apartment. I was picking up things and uh, he told me, he was calling me names and he says, you're, you're going to be dead. Raging over the repair, Taylor set fire to his apartment and then hunted down, then shot and killed one of the maintenance men, John Kroll. Taylor then walked down Penn Avenue to the Burger King, where he shot a retired priest, Joseph Healy, in the back of the head. We have a report of another gunshot victim at the Burger King Penn Avenue. Stalking the line of cars at the next door McDonald's, Taylor opened fire on a pit student, Emil Sanilevice, killing him. Inside the McDonald's, Taylor walked behind the counter and shot Stephen Foster, who would survive. And the gun here, he saw it and I fell back before exiting the building on the opposite side and shooting Richard Klinger as he sat in his van with his daughter. Klinger would also survive, but with brain trauma and paralysis on the right side of his body. Our life is a wreck. He, he's frustrated. He um, can hardly tie his shoes. He has pain. He has seizures. Taylor disappears into an apartment building and takes refuge with a black resident, assuring her that he's only targeting white people. Police officers responding to the flood of 911 calls catch sight of Taylor as he leaves. But don't realize it's him until he shoots at them as he enters a medical office. As the officers were coming back from the, the hospital area, they spotted uh, the actor running from the McDonald's. He fired two shots at our officers. Taylor barricades himself in the office with five hostages. He said he had one bullet left and he didn't know which one to use it on. Yeah, we have a hostage situation. The building is full of people, including a daycare center full of children. And around 1130, we heard gunfire going off. We thought was gunfire and we jumped up out of our chairs. We realized that's what it was because there were people running through the streets and police officers chasing and guns everywhere. The building was full of police. Yeah, it was full of police. And then we was working with some of our clients, kids is upstairs at the daycare. Officers worked to empty the building and systematically evacuate about 125 people, including the safe evacuation of 37 children from the daycare. All right, they're coming up, they're coming up. They're all coming out of the back of the building. As Taylor rages below at police hostage negotiators. Taylor complains about his mistreatment at the hands of racists while police tried to persuade him to surrender. At least he had an obligation or concern for his mother and that, that he should, you know, um, opt to surrender. Three hours after the first shots were fired, Taylor gives himself up. Do you have anything to say, Mr. Taylor? Yeah, shut up. Later searches of Taylor's apartment will yield more racist rants and writings, including a note titled The Satan List that had a list of targets on it and complaints about psychiatric treatment he underwent for schizophrenia. Taylor was convicted of three counts of first degree murder in November of 2001 and sentenced to death. He remains imprisoned near Waynesburg. Gordon Lesh, Channel 11 News.